What's going on everyone? Today, rather than hiding the installation of my MQTT broker in another one of my videos, I've decided to produce a video dedicated to installing an MQTT broker. This video will show you how to use Docker to self-host an MQTT broker, as well as the broker add-on in Home Assistant. I'll also discuss an MQTT testing tool that I use to validate my deployments, as well as do some troubleshooting if it's required. Now, given that the purpose of this video is dedicated to MQTT, I will be discussing it in much greater detail. If you don't want to hear all about the technical details, I am providing you with timestamps so that you can jump straight into the installation parts you want to see. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Okay, so before we get rolling here, let's just have a look at my Raspberry Pi here and my Docker instance that I have running. So if we come into settings and then about, we can see here the latest version that I am running. And if we go over to the Docker version, same thing, settings and about, we can see here the version that I'm running. All right, so a little bit of background information. Um, MQTT, or also known as MQ Telemetry Transport, is a TCP IP based machine to machine or Internet of Things connectivity protocol. It enables ultra lightweight messaging transport that is ideal for connecting remote devices with a small code footprint and minimal network bandwidth. This protocol is event driven and MQTT clients can either publish or subscribe via topics which are decoupled from one another. The MQTT broker controls the connection between them, screening and delivering all incoming messages to the appropriate subscriber. These clients may be incorporated in the software you deploy, removing the need for further installation and MQTT can also be protected using SSL to assure privacy. So if we have a look at the overview, you have your Home Assistant instance, however you have it, Docker or on a Raspberry Pi or on a virtual machine, and you have MQTT Broker, which again can be running on a Raspberry Pi as the official add-on, or you can self-host it yourself. But these two communicate back and forth to each other. And if we just scroll out, we can see... that the MQTT broker will get inputs from Internet of Things sensors. You can get information from IoT, temperature humidity sensors, feeding into the MQTT broker. You can get information about light bulbs and they can feed back into the MQTT broker. And these ones are the integrated clients in devices. You can also set up devices such as ESP32s to make devices smarter like a light bulb or a plug, and you can get information back and forth from the MQTT broker to those devices as well. And all this information can then be kept in a database and then brought over to a nice dashboard like Grafana where you can visualize that data. So in this video, I am going to also be covering MQTT topics, wildcards, and best practices so with MQTT, a topic is a UTF-8 string that the broker uses to filter messages for each client. The topics consist of one or more topic levels separated by a forward slash known as a topic level separator. A client can subscribe to a topic by specifying the exact topic of a published message or by using wildcards to subscribe to many topics at the same time. A wildcard is only used for subscribing to topics, not for publishing messages. And there are two kinds of wildcards, single level and multi-level. So if we jump over, a single level wildcard, as the name implies, substitutes one topic level. In a topic, this plus symbol here denotes a single level wildcard. 
The topic level can contain any arbitrary string instead of this wildcard, and it will match the topic with a single level wildcard being used. A subscription to, for example, my home, main floor, plus temperature is going to match the following results. So it would match these, my home, main floor, kitchen temperature or kitchen humidity, dining room temperature or living room temperature. However, it would not match these ones. And if we just scroll out, we'll see why. So you can see that this plus matches these ones because it doesn't matter what is here as long as the first two my home and main floor match then this could be anything and it will match now when we come over to this side we see my home but it says second floor so it's not going to match so the multi-level wildcard covers a wide range of topic levels the hash symbol here or pound sign denotes the topic's multi-level wildcard. The multi-level wildcard must be positioned as the final character in the topic, which is preceded by this forward slash for the broker to identify which topics match. So in this instance of the multi-level wildcard, we can see that my home main floor kitchen and then the hash, so it doesn't matter if it's after this comes temperature, humidity, pressure, or air quality, all this is going to match. On the other side though, when we have these ones that have the first two are the same, well, in this case, my, my home, main floor, garage, so we don't match, and all of these have reasons why they don't match this wildcard. It needs to have my home, main floor, kitchen, and then something, and none of these match. So in general, you could name your MQTT topics whatever you like. However, there is one exception. Topics beginning with a dollar symbol have a different purpose. The dollar sign topics are designated for MQTT broker internal statistics. So those ones you can't subscribe to or publish to. So now finally, let's go through some of the MQTT best practices. Number one, a leading forward slash should never be used. So in the case here, you would never have a leading forward slash, which means you would never have this. That leading forward slash, it creates an extra topic level with a zero character at the front. So behind the scenes, when you enter that in, it's going to put a zero. This zero serves us no use and frequently causes misinterpretations and leads to mistakes. Number two, in a topic, never use spaces. Every programmer's nemesis is the space character. When things aren't working as expected, spaces are going to make it difficult to read and debug topics. As with leading forward slashes, just because something is permitted does not imply that it should be utilized. Number three, keep MQTT topics brief and to the point. Each topic is included in every message that uses it. Make your topics as brief and to the point as practical. Every bit counts on small devices and topic length can have a huge impact. Number four, avoid non-printable characters by just using ASCII characters. Because non-ASCII UTF-8 characters frequently display erroneously, it is difficult to identify errors or character set incompatibilities. I suggest avoiding the use of any non-ASCII characters in a topic unless absolutely required. I'll give you a few examples, as you see, but you can just look up ASCII, non-ASCII characters to see what they are. Generally, if you are using alt codes, those are going to typically be non-ASCII. The ones on your keyboard are fine. Number five. Insert unique identifiers, such as a client ID, into topics. It could be extremely beneficial to include the publishing client's unique identity in the topic. The topic's unique identifier assists us in determining who sent the message. 
Authorization can be enforced via an embedded ID and only clients with the same client ID as the topic ID are permitted to publish to that topic. Number six, don't subscribe to only hashtag. And as I say that, it is occasionally required to subscribe to all messages sent over the broker. For example, you may want all messages saved in a database for troubleshooting purposes. However, outside of this, don't use an MQTT client with a multi-level wildcard to subscribe to all the messages on the broker. Frequently, the subscribing client is unable to process this influx of messages caused by this approach and will fail. And number seven, everybody's favorite, naming convention. Because MQTT topics are case sensitive, it is critical to follow a consistent set of naming standards when creating topics. As a result, when establishing your topics, you should only use lowercase characters, digits, and dashes. The topic levels I found are best to go from generic to specific as the topic scheme flows from left to right. For example, if you had multiple temperature sensors, you could have a topic level of my home and main floor located in the living room and has a name of temp1. The topic structure starts with a broad category, in this example, my home, then the name of the floor, and concludes with the most specific identity, which is the sensor's name or unique identity. All right, so self-hosting our broker. You have a few options when it comes to self-hosting an MQTT broker. You can run it natively on your PC or server. You can run it in a container program like Docker, Docker Compose, and you can also run them in what's called LXC containers or Linux containers. I prefer to deploy either in Linux containers or in containers themselves, since containers don't include an operating system image and they use fewer system resources than conventional or hardware-based virtual machine environments, which reduces your overhead and I can go on and on as to my reasons, but you can do a little research and decide for yourselves. And like our hosting options, there are various brokers available. I like the Mosquito Broker, and in this video, I'm going to utilize the Docker Hub image, which I'll link to below. I'll also include a link to the instructions if you want to run it natively on your PC or server, as well as a link to some of the LXC containers that I use. Now, we can begin this process on the command line or using Docker Compose or through a GUI tool like Portainer or Yacht, which are a good way to get started, but I do encourage you to invest the time in understanding Docker from the command line. It just makes troubleshooting, for me anyway, a little bit faster. All right, so I have gone ahead and did a little bit of the legwork for you. So if we come over to my GitHub repository, the MQTT self-hosted, there are Docker Compose YAML files, well, one file, and Mosquito comp files. One of these is the official Mosquito comp file, and another one is just a trimmed down version. So if I just click into them, you'll see what I'm saying here. This is the official one, and it's pretty long. And the reason why it is this long is if you are going to be running this on Home Assistant, you can make some of the changes in this comp file as opposed to in Home Assistant and same with your Docker container. And the trim down version is here. And this is all we're going to need. And as always, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to consider security and your personal level of comfort with that. I highly advise you to enable authentication and even encryption. To do so, we're going to navigate to a Mosquito container. I'll just open up Portainer and we'll get into that container with the console link, or you can always get into that container using the docker exec command. It's going to launch the same terminal for the container, but for this video, I will just demonstrate Portainer. So if we come over to my docker version, we click on Portainer.
and I have a video that shows how to install this Home Assistant stack on Docker, and it'll be linked right up here. And I'm just going to go ahead and restart this container. So here, I'll just zoom in a little. So here is the exec console. And if we click on that, the command that we're going to run is bin sh, and then hit connect. So inside of this container, we can see everything that is listed. So like I said, this loads a terminal shell right in the Mosquito container. And it allows us to perform certain Mosquito specific commands. Um, and like I said, if you use the Docker exec command from the terminal, you'll be able to follow the rest of these commands the same way. It's the same terminal, just got there a different way. So the command that we're going to be running is mosquito underscore pass wd dash c and this dash c flag is allowing us to create a new user and we're going to do that in the folder mosquito and we're going to then name that file well i'm sorry actually it's config and then we can name this whatever pw um, file you can call it password dot txt doesn't really matter because in the comp file here you can see here what we're whatever you call it here you just make sure it's the same thing here so we're just going to leave it as password dot txt and then we supply it the username so i'm going to use mqtt dash user for this example and then it's going to ask you for a password so you just enter in your password and you confirm it again and now if we cat type out that um, file We will see here's the user and now this is a hashed version of our password so the next thing we're going to do is uh, and because this is in a container I don't have nano or vim access but because it's a container this is mapped to a file on the host machine so And there is that comp file. So if we go in there, we're just going to make sure that allow anonymous is set to false and the password file is the correct uh, name here. Um, hopefully everyone can see that. not changing the port the listener persistence I'm going to leave as true because I want to keep the logs and data uh, I'm going to give it the persistence location which is mosquito data and the mosquito log and if we go into my repository in the yaml file you can see here you would supply out with your ho ho on your host machine you'd supply your directory to the containers internal directories so config data and logs perfect so we'll exit out of there I'm just gonna shrink this down a little bit so the next thing we have to do is come over to our home assistant and add that MQTT user 
actually one other thing is in Portainer, the IP address of our MQTT instance is going to be the Docker um, container address. So in this case, it's 172.20.0.1 or 0.3. So we need to add that user. So we come back over here to settings and to people and to users. And if you don't see this add user button down here, what you have to do is just click on your user icon here and then scroll down and just make sure that advanced mode is set to on. Once you're done, just go back to settings, people, users, and add user. So we are going to give that, we can give it any name, uh, but the username here is case sensitive, so that matters. And the password that we put in. You can make it so that this user can only log on from the local network. Don't make it an administrator and hit create. And there's our user. The next thing we want to do is go back to settings and go devices and services. And you can see here that this IP address is wrong. Uh, and if it didn't automatically discover, you can go add integration and search MQ. And then you can select MQTT. And again, one more time. If I click this, it's going to throw an error because I already have it installed. But I will go ahead and reconfigure this because the IP address had changed. I believe that was a three. The port stays the same and the user and password. I just hit the next. Now for the MQTT options, you can um, enable discovery and enable birth messages. So that way, when you get new clients on, uh, MQTT will automatically discover them and you can go through here and change some of the settings uh, for the quality of service I can't remember exactly uh, what the numbers mean one is like the client will send a message and it doesn't care that home assistant uh, MQTT broker even saw it uh, another one is that gets confirmation back that the message was sent and I can't remember the last one exactly. And you can do this and set your topics. So uh, here, this has got a topic of home assistant forward slash status. And then the payload is online. And then this one is home assistant status and offline. And then just hit submit and it's successfully installed. So now we can move over to my Home Assistant on Raspberry Pi, and it's going to be a similar process, but I'm going to go through and install the Home Assistant, the native Home Assistant add-on. So the first thing we do is come down to Settings, and then to Add-ons, and then Add-on Store, and we type MQ, and I'm going to use the official one here, Mosquito Broker, and I'm going to install it. While that's installing, you can see here there's a documentation tab that goes over the configuration in Home Assistant here. I highly suggest you familiarize yourself with this documentation. Talks about all the different options that you have, like if you're going to enable SSL or encryption. Here's the cert files that uh, you're going to require to make that happen. And on that note, if you do want to go down that path, I will link to a few guides that will help you get going in that regard. I'll just go back to the info. Oh, shouldn't have clicked off. Okay, I will bring the video back as soon as this is installed. Okay, so that has successfully installed. So now we see a couple more options at the top here. So under configuration, this is where we can configure our Mosquito Broker. And we can set options like require certificate or this enables encryption. 
like I said, you'll have to upload um, certificate files to your Home Assistant instance if you're using it this way. And you can change your ports if you want. And the login here, we're not going to put anything in here because Home Assistant uh, official add-on and the Docker one uses the users. So again, for our users, um, we just come down to settings, people, users, and we add um, our user. So back in settings, and now that uh, we go back to our add-ons, but we see it here. So another thing you can do is put set the watchdog on and set it to auto update. Uh, depending on what software I'm installing, this is hit and miss for me because I don't want it to install something that's going to have breaking changes that will break my system. So sometimes I have it on, sometimes off. So when we're all happy with our configuration and we just hit start and then we can click on the log here and just keep refreshing a couple of times to see um, when it is connected successfully. So now we see that it's connected successfully. So if we go over to our settings now and then go to devices and services we see that it is automatically picked up our broker um, if it didn't we can go add integration and again search for that um, mqtt and add it that way the ip address of your broker in this case is just the ip address of the instance which is the raspberry pi which is this ip up here um, so we'll just hit configure so we can reconfigure it if we want if ip address changes or we want to not enable auto discovery so now that we have it installed let's play around with it a little bit so the tool that i was talking about that i use um, is called mqtt explorer um, this piece of software is an all-in-one client that provides a structured overview of your mqtt topics and makes interacting with devices or services on your broker a breeze. Uh, it's intended to investigate, display, and sort statistics in the MQTT topics in your IoT environment. It is handy if you want to evaluate how much and what type of information flows from publishers to the specified topic. You can also investigate what's going on in real time, which is awesome. I was created by a Thomas Nordquist, and I apologize if I mangled your name, uh, but it is a fantastic piece of software that is accessible for not only Windows and Mac, but also Linux. So I'll provide a link below, but for now, let's have a look at this software. So when you open it, it will have this screen here, it will greet us. So we just hit this plus, and we can name our connection whatever we want. So I'll name it rpi mqtt the protocol is mqtt the host like i said is just your um, raspberry pi ip address without the http it's just the ip and no trailing slash the port we didn't change so we'll just leave it the same here we'll put in our MQTT um, username and password that we picked. If you are using encryption, you can toggle it on here. I'll just save this. Uh, you can toggle it on here and then in the advanced section, you can add your certificates and manage them here and this is automatically going to subscribe to everything on the broker and also everything for our system messages all right so now we just hit connect so we can see that under system um, there's 27 topics and 27 messages and 
the broker. So it tells us the version uh, for the broker here. It tells us the version of Mosquito that we're using, how long it's been up, um, the load. Oh, there's just so much information in here. So you can play around with that and go through. Uh, published messages that it's sent out. You can have it so that it shows you the difference between the message that it sent previous and the new one, which is kind of cool for troubleshooting. Uh, you can see the topic level, or the topics here. So this is that sys forward slash broker and as the chain goes on. But let's have a play around with it. So if we go to our... Um, MQTT and if you forgot how to get here it was under settings devices and integrations and then just click on configure so if we wanted to we could publish a topic to my home slash uh, main floor slash living room And let's say that temperature is 24. And we can see here in our MQTT, the only thing is under this sys. But if I hit publish, oh, oh it's using the wrong. Sorry, I forgot to change that. And advanced options. Next, so this is where you can enable discovery, um, change your discovery prefix, and all the same information that we saw in the Docker version. We'll just hit submit. Not sure. Let's restart that. Reconfigure. Oh, the IP address of the broker and put in our username again. Next. There we go. So, sorry about that. Now, if I hit publish, we can see. the messages. So my home, main floor, living room, temperature, 24, which matches. So we can also listen to a topic. So let's listen to a topic, but instead of living room, let's change that to a single level um, wildcard with the plus so it's going to be my home main floor plus temperature and start listening so now if we come over to our MQTT we can our, our sorry MQTT Explorer we can publish messages from here so down here in the publish if I just publish to the same topic let's say 35 my publish button is sorry about that all right so now if i hit publish we can see it came over here into home assistant but because it's a wild card, if I put in kitchen here, and we change this to a, say it's 78, which is pretty warm. 
publish and we see it. Main floor kitchen. And that is all thanks to this plus the wildcard. However, if this was the second floor, and we have bedroom, and that temperature was, you know, 12, and we publish. We can see that it published that topic, but it doesn't match the wild card, so we don't see anything here in Home Assistant. So this is a good way to troubleshoot what's happening on your system. And let's have a look at um, a multi-level. So we'll just go my home main floor hashtag. Start listening. Go back over to MQTT Explorer. So now if we publish that same message, oh, it won't see it because it should be main floor. And now publish. And there we saw our 12. So now really anything after main floor, you could change this to anything. Literally, there's anything. And anything will work if that was the message. And there we see it there. Perfect. So I'm going to conclude the video here, my friends. I'd love to hear if anyone is having trouble with this process. I hope you learned something useful today. And if you've made it this far, thank you. As said previously, I encourage your comments in the section below and look forward to seeing you in future videos. Goodbye.